For relaxing times, make it fun touri times. Cut, cut, cut. What are you doing, boy? What are you talking about? Fun touri whiskey? Huh? He's saying he needs you to do it just one more time. This time, um, slower. Okay? That, that's all? Yep. Okay. Slower. All right. For relaxing times, make it fun touri time. Atto, nani yatten da gora? Ah. Hey. Hi. He's really needing you to go just slower. That's that's all he's saying. Yeah. He sounds really upset. No, yeah. What, what, that, all these, that's, that's all he wants there right now. There is all the saying. time in the world. Time yeah. is your friend. Okay? Enunciate. Slow. Great. Slower. Great. Okay. For relaxing times. No, 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 no. Cut! I don't, I don't know what you're saying. If I go any slower, I'll fall asleep. This isn't, this is root beer. I, I, you, the other sailor over there. Say it louder. I still don't know what you're telling me. I'm telling you, 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 i am telling you i am telling you i am telling you i am telling you This city is the launch pad for the trends of tomorrow. From electronics to sneakers, it all starts here. And at the heart of Tokyo is Shibuya, home of the world's busiest intersection, craziest nightlife, and all the shopping you can handle. The future starts now. Attack of the show, Tokyo 06. We are TV's only source for all the stuff you care about, and that's exactly why we are here in the land of the ah. rising sun. Hey, everybody, <laughs> it's September 25th. It's a Monday. My name is Kevin. Nondeska <laughs> Pereira. What's up, everyone? I am Olivia Munn. Why Japan? Well, because more than anybody else today, they are the premier culture makers from technology to entertainment to fashion. They are at the forefront of a cultural revolution that basically America's just playing catch up to. Absolutely. That's why all week long, the Attack of the Show crew is here in Tokyo showing you the inner workings of Japan like nobody has ever done before. I promise. Yeah, we are at the Tokyo Game Show getting PS3 exclusives from the heads of Sony themselves. You guys have to tune in all week long to attack the show, Tokyo 06. If you guys miss one day, you will be officially behind the times, so don't miss it. And right now, we're coming to you from one of the most happening districts in Tokyo. It's Shibuya. Now, this is one of the 23 wards that make up this city, and I gotta tell you, it's one of the coolest. It's also home to the busiest train station in the world, where 2.4 million people pass through daily. It is also home to the biggest Starbucks in the world, located right above the exceptionally crazy Shibuya Crossing. But you guys, you know what? We're not down in Frappuccinos. In fact, we are going to ease ourselves into the Japanese culture by doing a little something we like to call... Good morning, Grosso! Yeah, I'm not exactly sure whose idea this ah, was. a terrible idea. But every single morning this week, we are going to sample some local cuisine, which I don't know if you're aware, but the Japanese are known for eating some pretty bizarre crap. Okay, when you say bizarre, you mean pretty much nasty and gross, right? Yeah, let's get into it. Let's see what we have uh, first today. Oh, okay. Olivia. You what? get to sample some sesame seed sardine uh, chips, uh, which, oh. Go ahead, get in there. Oh my god. It'll peel the paint right serious? off the wall of your hotel. Well, you know what? I hope this gives you the runs because they are soy bo boiled egg quail egg thingies. Quail egg? They're really tough too. All right. All right, here we go. Come pie. Come pie. Yeah. Oh, we're feeding each other. Mm. Oh my god. It's all bone. The delicate taste 
is very pleasing to my palate. It's an explosion of flavor and soy that I've never tasted before. Is it? Is this straight bone in head? It's like head of a fish in my mouth. This is a great idea, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> it's really gross. Wow. Now, normally, at this time of the show, we, we take you around the net, but since we're being thoroughly disgusted, we're going to switch things up here in Japan. We're going to highlight the best parts of the Shibuya district. All right, you guys, get your robots and your TiVo program. Aha! We're about to go around the district. You're disgusting. Shibuya is our first stop on our tour of Tokyo for one specific reason. It's the point from which all that is cool is born. 20-something hipsters dominate this district and make it one of the busiest parts of Tokyo. Shibuya Crossing, also known as Center Guy, has more foot traffic per day than nearly any other crosswalk in the world. With its cafes and shops, Shibuya Center Street is a gathering place for many, including some very unusual looking ladies. Known as Gangoro, which literally translates to blackface, the popularity of this strange style has been fading as of late, but enough of them still populate Shibuya to have a lasting effect on visitors. International fashion trends are born and subsequently killed at the 109 building, which towers over Shibuya's bustling streets. We'll go more in-depth on the 109 later in the show, but the one thing you should know, this building contains some of the hottest women in the entire universe. The residents of Shibuya pride themselves on their musical tastes, and no place better reflects that than Dance Music Records. Tucked away on a side street, Dance Music Records caters to the vinyl lover, of which there are a surprising large number in Shibuya. This store stocks a huge amount of new releases on vinyl, specializing in hip-hop and house music, and they've even created a custom collapsible record crate to haul your music in. You know, here in Japan, they've taken cell phone craziness to an entirely I know. new level. We're talking phones loaded with more bells and whistles than a flamboyant circus train. <laughs> yeah, they do this really cool flip around thing and everything. It's amazing. Well, we sent our own gadget guru, Will O'Neill, deep, deep inside the Gadgetopia to show you guys the coolest phones out there in AOTS hardware, Tokyo style. Mush mushy. <laughs> Coming to Tokyo was like visiting the mecca of consumer electronics. Today I'm gonna go out and see if I can find the sexiest cell phones that we'll never see in the States. Come on. The F902 from Dacomo is an awesome multimedia phone. It's a 3.2 megapixel camera, the mini SD slot, so you can put up to two gigabytes of data on it. Music, photo, videos, whatever floats your boat. It has this biometric security device in the back, so if you don't want your old lady poking around and reading your text messages, you can be good to go. The Vodafone Aquos takes multimedia to the next level. You can watch live TV on this thing. That's video out as well. 2.2 megapixel camera as well as a mini SD slot. So you can put up to two gigabytes with the data on it. It has facial recognition software for security purposes. You hold it up and it looks at you and says, hey, that's well, you can go ahead and use this baby. It also has QR codes, which is this new thing in Japan where you can see a product that you want, take a picture of it, and it tells you all the information about that product. I'm not sure if this guy's gonna make it to the States, but you know, hopefully it will. Everyone knows how much I love Windows Mobile 5, and the W03 by Wellcome is like a sidekick on steroids. It's Windows Mobile 5, so it has support for Windows DRM. It means you can download songs via Napster or Rhapsody to Go, and it has a mini SD slot, so you can put like up to two gigabytes of music on it. What's also cool about this guy is that you can actually hook up a CD-ROM to the device itself and rip music directly to the device that way. I kind of like this. I think I'm going to take it home with me. Broadcast TV is all the rage in cell phone technology. But in addition to that, the Satachi also has banking functionality. You put your funds into the phone itself, and when you want to buy a product, you just zap it, and the funds come off. Very cool. That's some of the cool cell phone technology coming out of Japan. On the bright side, I'm sure some of it's going to make its way over to the States. But in the meantime, have fun playing Tetris. I love to be some Japanese cell phone. I know. Now, when we got here, Kevin got his cell phone. Two hours later, he already had cartoons, anime on there. You knew how to find girls' emails. I've got myself soon. popping out of an egg, a little animation. <laughs> but the best Amazing. part are these 2D code readers. Yeah. There's these little boxes uh, on all the ads and in magazines they and look subways. They like barcodes. Essentially, that's yeah. what they are. And, and you line up your camera phone, you hit a button, all of a sudden you got access to extra info, special discounts. It'll launch websites for you. It's all fantastic. It is amazing. 
Now, uh, to some of you out there, going to Japan is kind of hard, so we know that the closest thing to getting here is through your PlayStation. Kind of sad, actually. But don't worry, you know, Sony is a company that's actually betting their entire future on this next generation right. gaming console. But is it, the, the, is it gonna change your life like Sony wants to believe? That's the question. Know. What's the deal with the PlayStation 3? Well, lucky for you, I found out when I went behind the scenes at an exclusive Sony event at the Tokyo Game Show. Sony is hoping to make a big splash here at the 2006 Tokyo Game Conference. They've got over 200 units playable on the floor, and tonight, they're holding a very special conference for members of the foreign press to try and impress us. I'm starting the evening off right. I've got Kazurai here, who is going to give me all the details on the Sony PlayStation 3. You've got like 20 plus games on the show floor right yeah. out there. Some of them running in 1080p at 60 frames a second. Correct. Some of the games are like NBA, that's running in uh, 1080p at 60 frames. Ridge Racer uh, was another one. So we have some titles that are uh, running at uh, a frame rate that you know some people said could not be done as we launch on November 17th. So Julian, this is kind of a big coming out party for Lair TGS, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. We've been we've been waiting for it, and timing right around E3 was just about wrong with where we were at with the project. So TGS was just perfect. We were getting bored of flying around with craft. So then we thought, well, what's really, really, really next gen? The one thing which came to mind was dragons. And one of the things I personally don't like is traditional fantasy. So why don't we take the dark and pretty part? as the inspiration, look at dinosaurs and look at uh, melding dinosaurs and bats and things like that in a nasty world and basically come up with the coolest dragon game ever. But it's all about the quality of the games and what we're seeing here today is that the launch titles for the PlayStation 3 already look better than the launch titles were for the 360 and that bodes very well for the future of this console. For more TGS coverage all week long including photo galleries, screenshots, trailers, go to g4tv.com slash Tokyo. Now listen, we know you folks at home have a lot of questions about Tokyo's culture yep. and the happenings, and that's it's understandable because it's kind of a, a weird joint that's around right. these parts. Yeah. But don't worry, we're here to serve all week long. We're answering those questions in a little segment we like to call, What's Up With Japan? week long we are answering your questions about Japan both the safe ones and the not so safe ones. I like those. That's right. First up is John from Wisconsin who has questions about discounts on the Xbox 360. Hey attack of the show. Is it true you can get Xbox 360 games for under five dollars in Japan? Yeah that's uh it's true the Xbox is not doing so hot in Japan. Yeah it's not in a very good state right now and uh yeah, you can get games for, you know, for kind of cheap, but they're not that great. Yeah, it's, first of all, it's not all the games. Like, yeah. you're not going to find Saints Rodu here in yeah. Japan, and it's not going to be five bucks. But you can get some discounts. The problem is that they're not going to run on your uh, North American That's Xbox right. 360. So, yeah. tough luck, buddy. Sorry and in general, that. the Xbox just isn't doing so great. So, you know, let's just do a moment of silence. Oh, okay. You know what? A moment of silence is not going to quench our spirits here. It's not going to quench the TGS Tokyo game show going on right now. That's right. You know, E3 has gone the way of the Dreamcast, and so now all the major game companies, they've really got to refocus their efforts yeah. on the Tokyo game show. Well, we want to know what you guys think. Is the Tokyo game show the new E3? Vote on our website at g4tv.com slash Tokyo, or text your vote to G4TXT, that's 44898, to vote and register for AOTS Live News Alerts. And do yourself a favor, remain sedentary. Just stick around because later on we're in, the, in a loop. Yeah. We're going to debate that exact topic with some of the smartest minds in the gaming world today. Stick around folks, there's plenty more Attack of the Show Tokyo 06 coming your way. Alright, stay with us everyone. The sun is just rising here in the land of pixelated pornography and we've got it all on TV's only source for all the stuff you care about. That's rain, Kevin. You, you know rain is the same as in America. In the trend-setting land of Japan, what's up with their nutty TV? Oh, yeah. 